Hey kids, uh, we are going to have two separate videos for lesson seven in module six because there is a lot. Uh, we're gonna use, oh, there's just a lot of information, so we're gonna use the template that comes after lesson seven. So if you find, <clears throat> I'm using an old book, so I have the problem set, and then I have the homework, and you guys don't have that, and then you have a template. So it's probably in your learn book, and in the new books, it should be on about page 61 or 62, something like that. And it's going to be the lesson seven template, and it's gonna have these two boxes on top, and then a little coordinate plane, and the points are what you need to look for. It's gonna have A, B, C, D, G, H, I, J, and these are the points for each of them. Find that page, and then you can do this activity. So this is the concept development for lesson seven, but it's really important to um, understand what's happening, and this is where we start learning about making a rule for a table of values, which comes even later in module six with data, understanding data, how it's presented, how it's collected, how you display it. So, uh, so here is our short template lesson on the front and the back of this one for this video. <sighs> so first things first is I want you to notice that each point has an X and a Y coordinate that is then written again in the proper format in this third column, okay? First the X is zero, then the Y is three, and then they put it in the coordinate pair. I think on some tests in a computer format, they're gonna show you um, like an X and a Y, and they expect you to put it in this format on the computer test. So just be prepared for that. You don't have to solve anything. You're just moving the data over, putting it in the proper format. Next thing you have to do is actually plot those points. Notice, I've mentioned this in another video, if X is equal to Y, notice what happens with our line. So if X is zero and Y is zero, we have this point. This is gonna be point A, okay? And then if X is one, Y is one, that's point B. If X is C, I'm sorry, if C, for point C, if X is two, Y is two, C. And for D, we have three, three. Plot your points, label them, and now we're going to connect them. Put your lead down on a point, then turn it until it is right straight through the origin. Make a nice long line. Sometimes it'll say these points go with a line and it'll give you, uh, like the name of the line is line A or line B or whatever. Um, this is going to be line A, B, C, D, because these are the points on the line, okay? Next line that you're going to create is using these points. Now, let's make the line, then we'll talk about what looks different about these coordinate points. So if I have a zero for X, that means don't go anywhere on the X, um, on the X coordinate, okay? Do not use that, but do go up to three, for y, and that's point G. And then for H, we have one half. Notice that this number line is counting by a half. So if X is one half, Y is three and a half. Three and a half. If, X, if for point I, if X is one, then Y is four. And for point J, Uh, we have X at one and a half, and Y is four and a half. Connect your points. Put the lead down, straighten it out, make sure it goes through all those corners, and draw your line. Be precise, I've seen some pretty crazy looking lines that are not straight, use those straight edges. You can use a set square or you can use a protractor's edge. Uh, just use something straight, please. Be precise. Okay, so what do you notice? Um, 
If you look at the coordinate points, then you should see that x, if x is 0, y is 0. If x is 1, y is 1. Hmm. They are the same. So x is equal to y. So what you want to do is you want to be able to say x is equal to y. And so you want to use both x and y in your statement. or in your rule, okay? So use X and Y so that you're, you're showing the relationship of these two points to each other, okay? Now, for this one, try to find a pattern, okay? So, um, oh, and one other thing before I get too far away. Sometimes points will not be on the graph or on the coordinate plane. If you follow the rule though, you should be able to find any point on this line. So for example, this coordinate plane only goes up to five for X and five and a half for Y. So if I go off the plane but still stay on this line, give me a coordinate pair or an ordered pair that would fall on this line. And you can give me any, any point as long as they're equal. So you could say 10, 10 will fall on this line. 12, 12 will fall on this line. 20 and 20 will fall on this line. Because you're using the rule. You're using this rule. So if you want to have another point on line AD, then it would have this rule as uh, X is equal to Y. Okay, so that's what this template kind of helps you to figure out. Now for the second line, line GJ, look at the relationship between the numbers. Okay, what is the difference between each of these numbers? And so what you want to do is do a little tiny bit of math in your head. Sometimes you might want to... Um, write it out so you don't lose track of what you're doing, but find either the zero or the one if you can, because that's going to be the easiest place to start. Okay. Sometimes though with multiplication, zero will not help you because if you multiply by a zero, you get a zero, but with uh, addition or multiplication that it will become evident when you have a one as to what you're doing. Because if I had the difference between zero and three is three. So am I adding three? Yes, because if I multiplied by three, three times zero, I would get zero here. So it looks like I'm adding three. Confirm it. The difference between one and four is three. It looks like I'm adding three. Does it work when you have a fraction? Yes. If I add three to the half, I get three and a half. And if I add three to this one and a half, I get four and a half. So the rule looks like it's going to be plus three, but what am I adding to 3? So it's going to be x plus 3 equals y. You can also say um, uh, add 3 to x to get y. There are a number of different ways you can say it and write it, but you have to include x and you have to include y. Okay, so that's how you can look for these types of um, patterns. You're looking for patterns on these tables of value. Okay, let's see. Now the next one. Let's go to the back side. Okay, now this one has, for each table of values, okay, you're going to have a new line. So we're going to have four lines on this graph. And I think I'm going to tip this just a wee bit so that I can fit the whole thing on here. I will try my best. All right, here is a line. Point L, M, and N. If X is 0, okay, do not go anywhere on X. So I have to move it up just a skosh. Don't go anywhere on X, but do go to 3 for a Y. That's point L. For point M, we have 2, 3, 2, 3. That's point M. For N, we have 4, 3. What do you notice about this line? 
Hmm. Well, Mrs. Setness, all these points are on the same Y coordinate. Oh, oh my gosh, you guys are so smart. Yes, that is true. Look, the Y is always three. Okay, so if you have something that is consistent throughout, you can just name it and say, no matter what x is, y is 3. Because what we've done now is we've made a horizontal line that is parallel to the x-axis. And this line, nothing will ever change about the y value if you put any point on this line. x can be whatever you want, but y will be 3. Okay, so that's one of the ways to write that one. y is always 3. Next line, 0, 0. That's point O. We'll make an, an O out here, not a zero. For the zero, sometimes I'll put a slash through it so that it, it looks uh, different. Sorry, you couldn't see that. For the zero, I'll put a slash. When I worked in like business and money managing many, many, many years ago, right after college, uh, that was how they kind of did that for everything. So this is um, the letter O, and this is a zero. Okay, zero, zero. Next one, one, two. One for X, two for Y, point P. Two for X, four for Y. Connect your points. This is our origin line. And then it goes up through those points. Okay, oops, I forgot to put my Q there. So this is line OQ. Okay, and for this line, what is the rule? So again, if you have a zero and you end up with another zero, it doesn't really help you figure out what the pattern is. So try to find one where X is one. Try to find one where X is two. Compare the difference. Now if this is two more and this is two more, are we adding two or are we multiplying by two? If we were adding two, then this one would be two right? So if you multiply by 2, then it should continue the pattern. What if I add, I want to confirm, and I say if 3, if x is 3, what would y be? Look at when I extend and I put my point here. What's it going to be? It's going to be right on the line. So that's a confirmation that we're taking x and we're multiplying by 2. Now notice I'm using this little dot. Somebody said, what's that dot the other day? And I said, I've been using the dot for a while now, x times 2. It's a fancy way of saying times. Why do I want to put a dot there instead of an x? Because if I had x, x, 2, that would be very confusing. So we're taking the x coordinate from the x-axis. We're multiplying it by 2 to get y, OK? So x times 2 equals y. That's the rule for this line. OK, so we're coming up with rules in Lesson 7 and from now on. So they jump right into some pretty hardcore graphing in the upper lesson. So you really have to understand this concept. Let's make another line, line RST or RT. If x is 1, y is 1 half. If x is 2, y is 1 and a half. Point S. If x is 3, y is 2 and a half. Okay, make your line. So I did the other one in pen, but this seems to be plenty dark enough with my new pencil. Okay. All right, so we have this line here, line RT, that has these points. Now, what is the relationship between each of the X and the Y numbers? 
What's the difference between the x and the y? Hmm, which one's less? y seems to be less each time. How much less is y? Well, it's a half less here, and it's a half less here, and it's a half less here. So you come up with your rule that y, or x, minus 1 half equals y. x minus 1 half equals y. Or y is, that would be like the equal sign, 1 half less than, T-H-A-N, x. So lots of different ways to say it as long as you come up with your little formula in order and apply it. So I could come up with any other point on this line and I could say, okay kids, if you really understand it, then x is 20. What's y? And you should be able to apply this rule and know what? That y would equal 19 and a half. If it's half less than whatever x is, y is just a half less. <clears throat> okay, I hope that makes sense to you because it makes sense to me. Last line, we have line UW. So we have 1 for X and 3 for Y. That's point U. Then we have V at 2, 6, 2. Holy free holies. Way up here. V. And then 3, 9. Three and blah, 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 all the way up here. That's point W. Okay, you have a long line. I might need my long ruler for this, the whole shebang. And we're going to go through all three points and look at where that puts us. I could keep going and I would intersect right at the origin. But I'm going to leave it here for a minute. And we're going to look at the difference between the x and y points. x is 1, y is 3. Hmm, did we add 2? Does that apply here? Nope. If x is 2 and y is 6, ah, take that 3 and then multiply it. So 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. Does that work again? 3 times 3 is 9. Yes. x times 3 equals y, or y is uh, 3 tripled, or a triple 3. Well, we'll just keep writing it. 3 tripled. Okay, lots of different ways you can say it, and, um, and you'll see it written many different ways. I really prefer the straight-up formula. It helps me think about it without all the words that are getting in the way. Okay. That is what this Lesson 7 is all about, and see how it took an entire video just to show you the template, but boy, is this good practice. Click subscribe if you're not in my homeroom class, and hopefully I'll see you on another video. Bye!